And he's here to save the day So all you bad guys better behave Cause here comes Connor Nabe His name is Nabe, comma, Connor If you're a criminal, you're a gunner If you think for a second that you'll be saved Then you don't know Connor Nabe He runs Clarity Float Spa In Missouri, the town of Columbia But that's just the entrance to his underground cave The crime-fighting layer of Connor Nabe When he dons his mask and his cave All you villains better pray That this will be your lucky day Because here comes Connor Nabe mm. Connor Nabe All right, so that song goes out to Connor Nave. <laughs> <laughs> that song goes out to the Petrovics. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens. Remember that that last episode, or what, not last episode, but an episode was that was however long ago. previous ago, <laughs> and we said we'll, like we'll a give weeks. a present to whoever sends in a question next. That's it was Connor, Connor Nave. Nave. Yeah, yeah, he's the one. Go. Here. There's your present, Connor. So that's what happens when you send us yeah. questions. Happy, happy float day to you. Yeah, happy thanks. Daily that's a good question too. Day. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep keep fighting that crime. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We we do have a question today uh, from someone who sent it in from Santiago, Chile, and the question is, "Hey guys, hey, I'm opening a float center, three tanks in Santiago, Chile. Nice, yeah, in December." Under construction, ATM at the moment. I got it. Yep. <laughs> we will be the first and only flotation center in the country. Any general advice on being the first and only flotation spot? Thanks. Hmm. Yeah. We got, we got advice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do well, you know, because yeah. if, you, if you don't do well, then people are going to look at you and... Think that floating, <laughs> you're going to ruin, gonna ruin it for all of yeah. your country. Yeah, you might, of, you might bring down Chile. the entire global float economy. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, no pressure, but seriously, it's <laughs> it's it's a big deal. I mean, it's it's kind of exciting. Like if I were to think about that, that that to me gets me like pumped up. Like you get to introduce the concept of floating to so many people, which is so cool. Like I I don't know, maybe it comes from the fact that we've we've lived through this a little bit ourselves. Like when we opened Float On, there were so many few float centers out there. Then. Did you say so many few? So few. fewer. So few. <laughs> so many less than there are now. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to call you out live here in the studio. But. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. <laughs> we'll just edit this out afterwards. That's not true. We don't edit anything. <laughs> um, so there were, there were less than the number than there are today. <laughs> When we opened, and it, it kind of felt like that, you know, we had to explain, we had to introduce floating, the concept in general, to so many people. And now, you know, I when I talk about floating, it's it's really hit or miss whether someone's heard about it before. You know, lots of people have actually heard about it. Especially and, here in Portland. In you Portland, know, like in yeah. In the, the area where we've been doing it. it's Yeah. And it's in some way, I mean, like, it's great. Like, I love the fact that so many people know about floating yeah, now. You guys are the float guys? It's something when we opened up I <laughs> never thought I would hear said, you know, it's just and no one knew what the yeah. heck we were doing or who we were, so it in does. In fact, now I, like, it's it's pretty rare I even have to explain the concept from scratch anymore here, at least, like, in our neighborhood. Yeah, 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 for sure. So but ride the excitement. You yeah. know, again, like, as you've probably heard, opening a float center is no easy feat. So, you know, t- take the fact that you're sharing this with a whole new country and population and yeah really ride that high <laughs> would be my advice I yeah, kind of miss get you it through the hard time like it know? was fun it was fun like having something that like nobody knew about that like every time you brought it up someone was like wait what, what? <laughs> yeah like, so I you I know I get a bank <laughs> So I, I don't view this necessarily as as a negative. Like don't don't think like oh boy like this is going to be super hard. Nobody knows about this thing. You know it's 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 really exciting. You get to be the person that introduces this to so many people. So yeah. So so on the I guess actual yeah advice actual advice. But yeah, ride the wave of excitement though. You, you know, <laughs> f- let it fuel you. Uh, and <laughs> also on top of that, be prepared to do a lot of education. Yes. You know, like that's I mean it, you you always have to do education as a float center. We kind of say that the you know like, again it's it's not 
uh, competition or other float centers that end up being your competition. Uh, it's lack of awareness that's kind of the greatest competitor. And in a totally new market, there's complete lack of awareness from most <laughs> of the people there, you know. So uh, making it accessible, I mean, even um, for, you know, places, I know, and I know for other countries it's been a little harder in places that don't speak English just because there's so much good press and almost all of it is in English and, you know, right. uh, English-speaking sports stars and, and stuff like that. So even translating some of the really good content that's been done from things like Time Magazine or, or different sources over into Spanish might be a good way to actually make it accessible, too, and, and show that this is a really big thing in other parts of the world. And there's something about the... Uh, it allows you to do a type of advertising that is is you know, more unique to the fact that you're the only place around, which is that all you really have to do is get people to know about floating and get them interested in trying it. And the nice thing is, like, if they've if you've gotten someone that far, like they're interested in trying floating and they go to look someplace up on the Internet, you're going to be the place that they find. So yep. you went to all your advertising and education. You don't really even have to, like, be doing a bunch about your float center or, you know, it'd almost be weird to be like all your advertising being like, we're the best float in town or <laughs> like something like that. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you just have to get this concept in people's heads and spread word that this thing exists. And that's naturally going to fuel people coming to your business. Which is a great boon when it comes especially to things like local media or, or um, you know, even blogs or, or something like that in your, in your area in Santiago. Because when you're trying to reach out to them, reach out to the press or send in press kits, you really don't have to be self-promotional at all. You know, these don't have to be articles about you as a center opening up in your neighborhood or opening up in Santiago or being the first place in Chile. I mean, that can be a nice side note. But largely, you just have to talk about this cool practice of floating that's spreading across the globe. And, oh, yeah, there's even one opening up here in Chile, you know. Um, I mean, that's my advice in general for sending out press kits. But in this case, it's just a lot easier to yeah. spin it that way. And Santiago is a huge city. I mean, there's like plenty of people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And three tanks is is a good number to start with and then expand from if you want to or, you know, add on other services. So I think that's a good a good number to kind of get the word out and, and start going as well in a, in a totally new area. But I mean, as far as advice, it's really just like focus on education. Like your your job now is to get people to know that floating exists. And that is that's like your primary marketing goal. Yep. So when you're taking out Facebook ads, again, it can be Facebook ads about floating in general and people discovering this on your website. Definitely have at least, you know, one one big page on your website devoted to just sharing information, linking people over to research that's been done, citing things that people need to know. Because here again in the U.S., there's a lot of people where you're like, oh, yeah, I run a flotation center. They're like, um, what's that? And then you're like, saltwater bathtubs used to be called sensory deprivation tanks. And at some point for a lot of people here, it clicks. And they're like, oh, yeah, I saw... I saw something on the news about that, or I, I remember reading something in a magazine about that. or, And you're just kind of trying to build slowly to that point where you are. So yeah, education on the website. Um, again, sending out press kits, press releases, things like that. I would say even if you can do uh, you know, open houses more regularly when you're starting up and just try to get people to come in and, and check it out, you know, coordinate with other larger groups in the areas. If you do have wellness groups or uh, you know, the equivalent of, of meetups down there where people are getting together on, on a regular basis to talk about health and wellness, try to be a speaker there. Try to get involved in your community. You know, again, these are, these are all things that I would advise almost any float center to do when they're getting started up. And it's just if you don't do them without any awareness or without other people advertising in your country, no one's really going to know about it or come in. So it's extra important that you take those steps and, and be doing that kind of active outreach. The other like important thing that's going to fall on your shoulders is uh, I, I just think you should be especially conscientious of the quality of your floats. Because the less people know about floating, the more they're going to judge the entire concept of floating based off the experience that they have with you. Like, as this gets bigger and bigger, like, someone could be like, oh, you know, that float center just, like, didn't have that great of soundproofing. Like, I had a much better float at this other place. Mm -hmm. But that just is not going to happen if you're the only float center anywhere around that people know of. So it's it's kind of on your shoulders to make sure that you you are doing that properly and that when people are coming in, they're getting that nice, good float experience. Otherwise... You know, you're kind of doing a disservice to a lot of a lot of other float centers and and people's kind of float knowledge going forward. So just keep that in mind. A lot of, a lot of responsibility. Yeah, and I guess the I mean, again, it's something that I, I kind of say for a lot of people, but might be uh, very important in your case, which is 
especially for the first couple months you're open, make sure to sit down with your customers. You know, hang out and have tea with them afterwards. Maybe even just offer half off their next float or a free float or something if they're willing to spend 15 minutes, a half an hour just chatting with you about their experience and what it was like. Because when you just open, and especially without other float centers around or, or kind of no immediate comparison nearby, uh, it can be hard to know what you're doing right or wrong from the customer's perspective. So be sure to budget aside time to really listen to them and you know, don't be afraid to, to close down within your first few months of being open for just a few days or, or a week or something to actually make some physical changes to your space or to your procedures. Uh, again, uh, this, this is nothing that I would say different to any other float center, really, that's starting up, except these things become even more important when you're the only one in, in the area. And that'll let you actually make sure that the quality is high, right? Like, there's no, there's no better way to ensure really good floats than just checking in with your customers and seeing what their actual subjective experience was and using that to improve your center over time. Yeah, it's really like being the first opens, kind of just like an extreme version of <laughs> opening, of opening know, a normal yeah. one. It's just like everything is more important, but will also be more impactful if you do it well. Yeah. So, yeah, rock it out. That's that's yeah. awesome. Congratulations, yeah. too. That's that's really exciting. And and definitely feel free to, to reach out to us anytime. You know, we're... Yeah, invite us over. And... We'll come visit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, do it. Invite <laughs> us over. <laughs> we love invitations. Good luck. This is exciting. Yeah. I'm excited for you. Um, yeah, and for, for any of the rest of you in any country around the world, <laughs> go to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast, and you can type your question in there. We will see it. We may just answer it. We will probably answer it. There's a pretty good chance. Yeah, or we'll direct you to another podcast episode where we already answered it. That yeah, happens sometimes. There's a pretty good chance of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you, uh, talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, bye.